Robots Radio presents... Today's chat is brought to you by the support of all our Twitch subscribers. Through the patronage you provide the Focus Fire chat team through the Twitch platform, we are able to provide you with the weekly podcast as well as the website and other aspects of Focus Fire chat. If you have any interest in becoming a subscriber of the FFC and gaining access to some exclusive features over in the Discord server, please be sure to visit our Twitch account and click on the subscribe button. If you're an Amazon Prime member, remember that you do have a free subscription to Twitch every month that can be used for this. And for those of you who are already subscribers, thank you again for your generosity. You may have heard the whispers of guardians gathering in the shadows, exploring the mysteries of this world and the worlds which surround us. We are all in search of truth. Sometimes we need to focus that search. Focus that fire! And so we come together! Welcome to Focused Fire Chat! I'm ready. Let's start. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready now. Let us begin. Welcome to Focus Fire Chat, recorded live on January 22nd, 2021, over on twitch.tv slash focusfirechat. As always, wanted to give a big shout out to our live chat here with us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us once again. This week's episodes are going to be focused around exploring the lore book, The Dark Future. This particular episode will serve as what we have come to call the intro session of the week's exploration. Before we go any further, however, let's run through a quick introduction of who all we have with us on the show. As always, this is your host, Blue Crew 86. And this is the green eyed music lover. The one who is always here week after week, who's growing moss that is as green as her name. Hi. 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 This is Hey, it's Orchid. I'm still here. Maybe. Maybe she is. <laughs> and in a special presentation of Focus Fire Chat, the guardian of a thousand voices, Rendell Zevis, is among us. Indeed, he's our guest this evening. He's the, the guardian of a thousand voices. Rindle has done Zavala. You almost threw in your hat, your hand, your hat. I don't know. I've had two glasses of wine and now I'm drinking coffee. So this is going to be an yeah, interesting episode. This is going to be an interesting uh, evening. The I know you've thrown in your voice for a few different characters that you wanted to play, but you've mostly stuck to the Zavala role so far. Well, Zavala, Drifter, uh, Orchid will tell you that I can actually do Shax pretty well. I was trying okay. out Devrim the other day just for fun. Oh, that one's interesting. Uh, and I have been known to do uh, Gollum and Smeagol every once in a while. <laughs> I may have challenged you to Gandalf instead. Well, you must understand that a wizard is never late, green Eyed music lover. Nor is he early. He always arrives precisely when he means to. Yes. <laughs> and on that note... Blue, do you have the rest of the uh, introduction stuff? Actually, I was just going to hand it over to Orchid's cute corner, apparently, is what yeah, we're going to call this now. It. I'm, I'm yeah, glad that we landed on a PG naming s- scheme. Uh, oh. If you were curious about that, just go watch the, uh, the, the unedited stream archive. You're going to make me laugh again. I can't. We're going to get fired if I say that word. Because it, it, my it, it, it was accent's a... going to make it sound like something that is not oh, the word. Oh, okay, okay. How, how is it that... Um. Oh, yeah, that's the way that it was put in the uh, history of swearing. Sugar, honey, iced tea. Yeah, I need to watch that. I saw that pop up the other day, and I was like, what is this gloriousness? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to um, recommend that everyone visit thelorenetwork.com, uh, where you can find us alongside many impressive lore content creators, and let us know your thoughts on all of the weekly lore roundups that you can find for both podcasts and YouTube videos. Um, also, if you'd be so kind as to leave us a review over on iTunes so other people can find our podcast, because leaving more reviews helps other people find the podcast. I don't know how it works, but... Apple, it's magic. You know what? Just do it, please. It would make me really happy. 
it just works. Just do it. Thanks. It's, it's like I love mag- you guys. It's like magnets. It just works. You guys are cute. Thanks. <laughs> it's the opposite of Nike. Instead of just do it, it's it just works. It just works. It, it just works. Yeah. yeah. It just works. And I, I guess this is the point in which Blue is allowing me to put in a little bit of information on my new gig. I'm actually starting a business. I did this terrifying step of actually registering it yesterday called Ooh. Bit by Bit, where I am going to be doing podcast help. Um, I'm going to be doing editing as well as consultations and setups and design and just helping people tell their story and tell their passions. That is the goal. So that is my new gig that I am starting up as of now. Super excited. I'm terrified. Oh, yeah. Honest. Like this yeah. is but see, scary. I'm, I'm not I don't have to do anything with it. I just get to watch. So I get to be excited. I'm yes. excited. No, it's, it's like gonna be very scary. scary. It's going to oh, be like, great. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, she might she might go down. She she's gonna be screaming in fear the entire time, but it's gonna be awesome to watch. <laughs> exactly. Isn't that the way that you go about things? Just kicking and screaming yeah. and just hope to God that something sticks. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of that going on, <laughs> but I've done enough research where I actually have I have one discovery meeting set up for next Tuesday with a group that's local to me. And then I have actually a fairly big streamer that I'm in discussions with of setting up a podcast for him who isn't already podcasting. So I'm working on possibly designing a podcast for somebody. So there's there's potential. There's oh, yeah. definitely no, potential there, out there. Especially like as more and more things move to like the inner like the more and more things move to like streaming stuff, diversification is the name of the game for that type of stuff. Absolutely. And so having a having a business that's there to help people get that diversification smoother transition is I, I think that's genius. But that's the goal. So all that said, we're gonna talk about something a little bit less exciting, right? A little bit darker. That lies in wait, the dark future. Still pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, it is kind of exciting. I actually will say that. So I remember when I first read this book. I read this book, and then I immediately read the book regarding stasis. After this, <laughs> um, this Ooh. colors a lot of things <laughs> in a very sinister <clears throat> light. <laughs> that that happens. Um, so it's it's uh it's. When you get done with reading this book, you you have a different, um, you have a different perspective on some of the events that have happened in the past. I would say, um, and Green, I know you you put a point here that we'll definitely talk about in the advanced session. But one of the big things that I would say for like to keep in the back of your mind when you when you do read this book, or if you listen to whether it's uh, Destiny Lore audio file or I think Orchid uh, isn't, aren't you guys starting to, or no, you're tackling uh, Tangled Web, right? Um, We did, The Dark Future was the first book we did of okay, the okay, new okay. lore. Awesome. Yeah, I don't actually remember what uh, episodes they were because they were so long ago. Okay, perfect. Um, So whether you read it or if you, you listen to it, um, one of the big important things that is very, very paramount to keep in the back of your mind is that this is not our this is not our timeline. This is not our story. Um, this is Elsie's story and, and in her own timeline, in her own reality. Um, and it actually goes and explains quite a bit of why Elsie, the exo stranger, is kind of doing what she's doing. It kind of puts a, a it, it explains her drive to a degree. Um, so even though it's not in our timeline, though, it does seem to be very, very similar to ours. Um, when I read it, the things that stuck out to me was that everything was pretty much in parallel to us up until the destruction of the Almighty. 
Um, and that seems to be when you read through it, that seems to be where the split, if you will, uh, really takes place. Um, and I don't know if Green, Orchid, or Rindle, if you guys had any thoughts on, on that assessment. Or did you guys think that, would you agree that that's kind of where the differences started occurring? Um, I think that they actually begin a little bit sooner than that, because certainly um, a lot of stuff does end up culminating with everything that happened with the Almighty, of course. But one of the big things um, that I kind of took away from it was that the heart of uh, the Black Heart never was ripped out of the Black Garden. Well, it was. Uh, that never happened. It was, but the process, the he said, like, Zavala makes the comment that they defeated the Black Heart, but in the process, it caused reverberations outside of it. Because that's what corrupt. That's what led to the corruption of Guardians. So that's where. But then he also refers, he he refers to the Almighty as their final victory when they when they run into Zavala. I think that's like in the third or fourth or third entry. I think um, whenever they run into Zavala, he call, he harkens back to the Almighty as the last victory that they they enjoyed. Uh, which is different from our own timeline because as as we have just you know we just had the Europa co- uh, campaign was victorious, um, so it seems like that was to me where it was really kind of different because you had uh, there was an event called the bombardment that happens in this future, uh, and that was it took place roughly a hundred years ago from when we start in the story. Uh, and that that is a very big turning point within this book is and we'll talk about that a little bit when we get into the the like the overarching summary but um when Zavala actually encounters Elsie Anna and Rasputin he makes a comment about the almighty being their last victory so that's where I was kind of like I was like well that's that's interesting because almighty for us that was not our last victory. Our last victory actually was just, you know, the campaign on Europa. Um, that may be... The problem I, is with assigning it as the the last victory that we have is that just maybe the last victory that Zavala is counting. There are other things that we have done as Guardians since the Almighty that correct. could be considered victories, but that was not necessarily sanctioned by the Vanguard. The other thing to keep in mind is that that perspective in particular is based around the idea of Zavala's perspective, right? So right. there are possibilities that the timelines are a lot more closer in line than what you would expect. Or indeed a lot further away, because I was actually just re- reading that section. I think it's the fourth part where Zavala is mentioning. Let's see. Yeah, that they that the Vanguard raids some cloak and dagger missions while in the Black Guard, and we tried to suppress the Black Heart. Um, so not sure if that means that they destroyed it or not. Right, they could fair. have, but either way, that's definitely when a major difference occurred because we started having corrupted guardians or did showing it. up. That's the thing is, did it, did something different happen? Mm-hmm. Because we corruption, corruption <laughs> isn't, isn't a, you know, sudden thing with a lot of this. Um, I would say with regards to the, the comment about Zavala, we did, we do know that within this book or this timeline they did not they were not victorious on europa aramis actually succeeded in in shutting us down on europa and she she destroyed the deep the deep stone crypt or she 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 destroyed much of what it was and then she actually that was part of what led up to the bombardment was aramis actually launched a campaign against the last city and won which was something. Black Flag brings up an interesting point. Of, yes. I, yeah, is there I a getting... possibility that our guardian does not exist in this timeline? I was actually, yeah. I actually was going to bring that up later too, was like, it, it seems that that is one of the, um, snags that exist in this, in our reality that, there is no mention at all of a the guard like of a guardian like our 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 hero is always referred to as the guardian within the lore and within this there is no mention of the guardian it is only mentioned you know guardians plural 
there's never been there's never a mention of a singular guardian rising above and actually like taking on the leadership role that kind of seems to be the case for our reality um which we actually do get a reference of by elsie in some of the quest dialogue later because she references the fact that there is there are slight differences um and we t- i i got the feeling when i got when i ran across this dialogue that it was us us being present was actually one of those differences yeah that would then, not surprise yeah. me so if the guardian is not in this book who is who are our main characters that we're dealing with in this book uh well the primary the primary character is elsie uh it's elsie bray or the exo stranger um and then it's from her perspective isn't it uh yes every yeah everything is from her perspective yeah uh Mm -hmm. we get we encounter the different like big names in the in the universe but they're all from her perspective um they're all very very haggard (laughs) because of different different reasons um the, oh yeah the first one is the first one that we encounter other than elsie is anna bray um and one of the big things that is different about anna in this story is the fact that jinju is dead jinju has been destroyed um so she no longer has a ghost uh she is pretty similar to the anna that exists in our own timeline um but she does not have the light any longer uh, and so she is very obsessed with learning stasis or learning how to control stasis from Elsie. Um, Elsie has the abilities that we we see in her in our in our realm uh, over stasis, and it seems like she doesn't get she's not um, susceptible or as susceptible to corruption as everyone else seems to be. Um, and Anna seems very interested in how that works and that kind of plays out. You kind of learn why she is obsessed with that, especially in the end. Um, and then kind of just in alphabetical order, I, uh, there's Eris. Eris is, you don't, ru- we don't run into Eris until the very end. Uh, and there's a reason for that. Um, ultimately just kind of slight spoilers here. <laughs> um, Eris is the big bad. Uh, she is the big bad in this timeline. She is the puppet master behind all of the puppets. Um, and I'm so looking forward to recording that voice part. By oh the my way. gosh! Like and like I said, I read this before I read regarding Stasis, which is all Eris defending herself. And it's like, oh my god! Like I can't, I couldn't read. I had to like actually stop and like take a break, and then come back to read regarding Stasis because. Elsie does a really good job in in detailing Eris's um, manipulations here. Um, and then when you read regarding Stasis, if you read it with the sense of, oh, hey, it's her manipulating people, it's really hard not to see that. Um, though the, the thing that was called out to uh, Zavala noted that Eris wasn't anything special. Um she was corrupted as all the other guardians following her discovery and acquisition of an artifact on the darkness, which is the artifact that we found on the moon, uh, which is the cutscene that everyone flipped out about uh, with mm-hmm. Eris and her little smirk. That's what this is. That's what this is referring to. Um, the next up we have Mara. Mara Sav is uh, she's Mara. Um, sad thing happens to Mara. Thanks to Anna. Um, but she, she's present. She has actually taken over the Leviathan, which I find humorous. They actually have like a small thing of like, where's Callus? And Mara's like, I don't know. I don't care. I took his ship. It's mine now. Um, so she is, she is actually the de facto leader of, of a, of the resistance against Eris and Savathun. Um, the Traveler is obviously mentioned um in this timeline the traveler actually abandoned humanity uh it fled the system trying to escape the darkness and we have a very very similar point of view of zavala from zavala's account because he recalls watching it disappear during the bombardment 
um, which was also when he lost his ghost, uh, and Savathun ripped his leg out of its socket. Um, that was a very detailed explanation of from Zavala about... So he, he literally is walking around with a crutch. He has one leg and no ghost. Um, and he also has a big beard, which I'm still upset about because, yet again, we get proof that guardians have beards. Um, can have beards. Not that they do. Can have beards. Yeah. Can have beards. Yes. This is the third guardian that we've seen that has a beard. Just going to just gonna make a note there that it's just making a note. Yeah, but why would you want a beard when you're wearing a helmet and then you have like beard in your helmet? That's dumb. Looking at because some looking at some of wearing the helmet. Yeah, looking at some of the hairstyles that they have given the guardians. I'm pretty sure This is sure why the- my guardian has a shaved head because she's built for speed. Okay. She's like I'm wearing a helmet. I'm I don't going to shave the head. I don't think that Okay. Yeah, anyway, so Zavala to, yeah. is the next main character <laughs> the <worst>. that we have. <laughs> How dare you beard shame orchid from chat. <laughs> um, Zavala, yeah. similar similar to Anna, has been stripped of his light and his ghost. Um, he It's called out that he's very disheveled and, and very frail. I think Elsie says something about along the lines of like, a strong wind could probably knock him over. Um, he is the last of the Vanguard. Both Cade and Ikora have been killed at this point. I kind of got the feeling that Cade had been killed in the prison, just like our Cade had. Ikora apparently was, I think the gentle way of saying it is ripped apart by Savathun is the feeling that I got. Um, He explained that his injuries and destruction of ghosts were nothing compared to what Ikora experienced during the bombardment. Um, And Savathun forced him to watch as she did that. And then she buried Ikora under the rubble of what was left of the tower. Um, some of the secondary, some of like the other big names that we get reference to is Aramis. Um, Aramis is referred to as, or referenced in, in regards to the bombardment. Um, it appears that within this timeline, she was not stopped by the Guardian, and she succeeded in laying waste to the Deepstone Crypt. Uh, and then she kind of it it kind of feels like she banded all the fallen together. And then that led to the bombardment, um, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, Drifter, we do, we find out what happened to Drifter. Uh, He tried to, he was trying to do something in the Deepstone Crypt and died. And Elsie and Anna found his corpse and it was not a pretty sight. Uh, So he had been dead for quite a while. Um, And apparently it did not it was not a pleasant discovery uh the other one is rasputin uh similar to our own timeline this version of rasputin was saved by anna during the attack on mars however she actually manages to find a exo body in the deep stone crypt that is compatible and rasputin is given mobility uh he is uploaded into an exo body by the sisters and then is they use him to reverse engineer uh the what was it the the net that gall used and they actually go and use rasputin's in uh knowledge they band together with mara and they actually go and capture the traveler and drag it kicking and screaming back into the the system um and then in a really kind of cool play zavala does the exact same thing that gall did except he uses it as a kamikaze attack against Savathun, which was, like, one of the coolest scenes. I, I just... The mental picture of what Zavala does in that fight was just really cool. Um, and Savathun, obviously, is still a predominant antagonist throughout the majority of the book. Uh, it is found out, though, at the very end, that she is just a... Uh, she's just a mini-boss. The real boss, the final form of Eris, is discovered at the end. So Cordell and Chat asked, does the book say anything of what happens to Shax? We do not know. I don't remember anything I don't think specific he gets mentioned. referred to Shax. Um, given the fact that he is not present, I would say it's pretty likely he's probably dead. 
because Shax, Shax is not one to fade away <laughs> from a fight, and so the fact that he's not in the thick of it, um, yeah, Elemis is saying that in chat too. His absence is pretty telling, especially yeah. since Mara is alive and Shax is not there. Petra's not there either, I think, if I remember right. Um, Correct. I'm trying to think who else. Um, like most of the most of the vendors that we we have are not present. Um, Holiday, I don't think was there. You know, Devram is not there. Failsafe's not Saladin, there. Saladin, no. Salad, yeah, Saladin's not there. Like, there's, I mean, a lot of these characters, they they aren't specifically said that they are they're dead, but the fact that they are not present on Leviathan or after when they start actually doing stuff is pretty telling. Almost cheering because neither is Rahul. <laughs> <laughs> no more edge transits. Yes. <laughs> That means no more burnt edge cookies. I loved edge transits. Uh, yeah, asinine and asinine and chat. First off, love that name. Uh, the last city has fallen. Yes, actually, they find Zavala living in the ruins of the Almighty, which is uh, which is kind of a cool little little nod to what happened. Uh, that's where that's where Rasputin recovers the plans to then go and kidnap the traveler yeah and osiris and saint are also there not not yeah, no, mentioned yeah, no sorry mention green. of either osiris or saint I, either yeah so green what were you gonna say i was just gonna ask rindle if he had a kind of a brief rundown of what the story is in this book like if he could give us a brief rundown of the book kind of starting out with uh elsie kind of giving a slight or a brief recounting of everything that's led up to this point, meets up with her sister. Uh, Anna finds her. They decide that they're going to try and see what they can... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, try to see what they might be able to do to try to counter everything that's going on. Anna is trying desperately to have some kind of power. She knows about Elsie and her usage of stasis or finds out along the way. Uh, go down to the deep, deep stone crypt, find Rasputin. They decide that they need to investigate the last city, find Zavala, disheveled, looking like an awoken Geralt of Rivia. Mm -hmm. um, and then formulate a plan, a very cunning plan, to use the same device or a version of the same device that Gaul put together in order to capture the Traveler because it has fled in this timeline. As was put earlier, kicking and screaming to help us once again find uh, Marasov, who has been uh, on the Leviathan and has taken it over for some reason. And when pressed on where exactly um, Callus is, hey, I don't know. No one knows where he is. He's just gone. At that point, battle ensues. Zavala yeets himself into the Scarlet Keep, which is an amazing image in and of itself. <laughs> it is. It's so. I. I seriously, it was one of the highlights. It was like when he, when he, because he, he does exactly what Gaul did. He like absorbs all this light, and it's just like this. He, he what is it? It looks like a falling star. Basically, is the way it's described. I'm like that. That's very, very Titanish. He, he fit this. He fist of panicked <laughs> the Scarlet Keep, basically. <laughs> This is what several people would refer to as the ultimate Yeetus Deletus. <laughs> Asher would be very proud of Zavala for, for headbutting oh, it. Oh, God, yes, he would. <laughs> would he, though? Oh. He, he, would make, he would make a comment. What, you you got to hit it with your head? Oh, you did. <laughs> Surely the commander would think of better things to do against the Scarlet Keep than to simply headbutt it. Again, Guardian of a Thousand Voices. Yeah. Eat your heart out, Riven. Uh <laughs> so Zavala yeets himself into the Scarlet Keep, and then what happens? Yeets himself into the Scarlet Keep. We find out that it is <clears throat> Eris who's been pulling the strings on everything this whole time. <laughs> we have a betrayal. Gasp. Deceit. 
Anna is using stasis and is suddenly revealed to be an agent of the other side. Uh, Elsie is forced to kill her sister and herself dies in the effort and it repeats. Then we get to do we go Groundhog back Day. And we start all over. It's it's the ultimate Groundhog Day. The the thing that it actually reminds me of, I don't know if any of you guys have seen it, but Dark, the show Dark. Um this mm-hmm. is very very it makes me really think of that and I know if Veru's in chat, he's going to be very happy that he made me watch that. Because that's all I could read here was this time loop of Elsie being caught, or either that or the supernatural episode. Well, it's, I don't, just, I don't it's know that trope, of right? That. Like the yeah. trope of of regenerative days. I made Elmas very happy in chat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Mystery spot. <laughs> So, anybody else not surprised that Anna goes bad? I wasn't. I it was it was foreshadowed throughout like the entire thing. She really fair. telegraphed it. It was not a surprise at all. Well, so. I meant even from the beginning of just like from what we know of her where she's at currently cuz last week we did the Legacy's Lament, right? And mm-hmm. There, oh, the week before we talked about and oh, when Osiris goes. No, I was talking about that with I think Orchid. That I'm was on Emily. My episodes. Yeah, we were talking about that she was being really snotty with Osiris right. um, in Emily too. Right, but I mean that still kind of applies in a way. Do you think that's just her youth, her no immaturity, I think she's or just being really? I don't know. I I don't know if it's the stress of the entire situation of that, like she lost her planet and she had to put her, you know, boyfriend computer into an engram and now she's trying to shove it into a body so she can go on dates with it or something. I don't know. Anna's Anna's described as being really like uh, she's driven by emotion uh, and, and not not like just emotion. She's very um, she she acts and thinks later. Uh, and so, like, because that's what Zavala kind of just talks about when he, when Elsie uh, overhears him voicing his concerns to Mara, and Elsie actually thinks that they're talking about her. Um, and then Zavala actually has a conversation with Elsie where basically Zavala says, "Hey, if you're not able to pull the trigger, I will." And El- mm-hmm. and Elsie's like, "No, that's m- she's it's my sister. I need to do that." And and Zavala like Zavala straight up says, "If you can't kill her, I will do it." Like, yeah. And I mean, so Zavala, I actually I actually really do like Zavala's character in this in this thing because he is still he's he's like broken, but he still has that groundedness that you see in making tough decisions, making these really rough decisions. I mean, he's given up, he's lost hope, but then when they finally are like, oh, look, we actually have a glimmer of, you know, being able to do something, he he rallies to that. Um, but, like, yeah, that conversation with Elsie and Zavala about Anna, Zavala's very aware of Anna's, like, um, not failures, but shortcomings. And he is, he's completely... He's completely very militaristic, as we kind of have seen with Zavala, in that sense. And he calls. I mean, he he does. He calls Elsie out and says, you know, hey, this is this is possibly going to require her being put down, and yeah. I need to know that you can do that. So I and 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 so then when when she responds, that's why he then goes on and does his sacrifice of that he does is because basically he's like, okay, well. You, you're gonna do. You're gonna take care of this this potential problem, which it actually is a problem. The question yeah. I have, though, is that because Zavala is so open to ending Anna, because Anna has become a threat, right? Mm-hmm. He's been warning about Eris in our normal timeline for quite a while until Eris has within the Shadow Keep expansion proven herself ish yeah i was gonna say to be fair zavala's warned us about every major like there's there's 
Zavala right. has always been very conservative in the sense from a military standpoint of, okay, we can do this, but this is going to open us up to a counterattack, which is the entire right. explanation of what happened in Forsaken. Like that was that was the entire thing. His entire thing was we are guardians. We are not conquerors. We do not need to stretch ourselves thin to do a personal vendetta. You saw that at the end of Forsaken when the the um who, who was it? It was uh was it Riora came to the city and asked for help and Zavala was like, Okay, yeah, now now there is an actual strategy here. It's not just passion we we will support you and like he he actually goes to the reef's defense at that point but when it's something that's just like this this uh fire from the hip you know impassioned oh well he hurt us so we're gonna go hurt him zavala definitely is very very anti like he's very against that um because he he's warned us about eris he's warned us about osiris he's warned us i mean i mean like go down the list of all the the problems or problem creators and Zavala is back in the background going I mean he's warned us about Rasputin too he does not like Rasputin why in the name of the traveler is it that no one will listen to me and, well and then and then there's that problem too because he just like he witnesses firsthand the one thing that he has like dedicated his life to protecting and trusting in running away and leaving him to die yeah so like Zav- I, I mean i know zavala is not like the main character but i really like the show of zavala's like ability to rally back and actually get bleep, bleep. done sorry this is true so let's take a quick ad break i know it's really really late in the episode but let's take a quick ad break ad break and do a kind of a wrap up of our ideas on the introduction aspect of this book before we finish out this episode. So we'll be right back. Following is a public service announcement from the starter set Dungeons and Dragons podcast. This is your D&D campaign. This is the starter set podcast. You know how like poison frogs don't lick each other's backs. So it's Howl's Moving Castle Mm -hmm. with a face. Mm -hmm. Hey there, I'm Great Mandibles. Because <laughs> one of the party speaks abyssal. You're all going to die. <laughs> and then adventure falls into your lap. Plop. This is your D&D campaign after listening to the Starter Set Podcast. <laughs> so join Sam and Ed every Friday on the Starter Set Podcast for prime Dungeons & Dragons content. Any questions? And we're back. And... So my question for you guys with the introduction of this book is with what we know about getting into dark future, the fact that Elsie mentions that there, that she in our timeline comes from a darker future. Is this the dark future that she experienced, which means that this is the aspect that we are seeing of her other timeline. Is this, are kind of visual in seeing that. I think in one respect, it's a future because this is, I mean, after all, if we're led to believe that it's effectively resetting every time she has done this tens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of times, uh, trying to change little things, but it always seems that she winds up in the same position every single time. So her future is one of many and they've all turned out very poorly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, I would say like, first off, I mean, the right. That also is a testament to her tenacity about it. I mean, we've seen Elsie's tenacity because of what happened with Legacy's Lament, right? You know, she's what, 800, over 800 resets and she's still going strong. Um, so she, she doesn't, she doesn't really quit like she doesn't stop for much um but like i don't it's like my problem my problem is is that it's such inter so <laughs> introducing timelines in multi multiple verses is such a dangerous thing because it can so easily go sideways from a storytelling perspective um so i'm really i'm going i'm very interested in how they're going to like 
bring this back um, because now they've opened that Pandora's box, if you will. Uh, they they had kind of hinted at it with Osiris and the the sundial, but this is something that like we legitimately we now have a character from a different reality interacting with our reality. And I know like I haven't seen it recently, but I know like when we first started finding all this stuff out, there was a lot of people freaking out about like, well, what's where's our Elsie? Like where where is our Exo Stranger? Um, you know this is. The, that's one of the things that is in the back of my mind when I was reading this is like, okay, so this is confirmation that this is LC 2.0, if you will. Um, but where you is... You mean 814.2? Well, but... No, but I mean like, you know, like... Uh, oh, God. Um, so DC's multiverse, right? You know, you have Earth Earth 6, Earth and all that. This is LC from mm-hmm. Earth 6. It's it's like it's another reality's version of a character that we all recognize and know, but is different at the same time, which is also problematic because if you start applying that logic backwards, a lot of the things that Elsie talks about and is is experiencing might not necessarily apply to our reality. Like the whole thing with the mm-hmm. journal. In her reality, the journal is a physical book. In our reality, the journal is a digital copy. Like she calls that out specifically, and that and that is you know again these little idiosyncrasies between the two realities. You start messing with those dominoes that much, you're going to start knocking stuff over. Um, right. So. Yeah, and and chat chat's talking about too, like you know that goes back to you know the merchant and the alchemist glass, um, which, if that's the case. I again will be very interested in seeing. I'm just I'm very interested in seeing how this is going to come back. Like how how they're going to rectify not necessarily they're not going to need to retcon anything, but how they're going to rectify this this into the story as our guardian makes our own fate. You know, our guardian is par- guardians are paracausal. They they can they can sidestep the causality of reality. Um and I'm just curious if you you know, there's only so many models of time manipulation that you can take before you start breaking things. Um, you know, the Merchant and the Alchemist Glass, it's a um, it's a fixed timeline, uh, which existentially has problems because that means that everything is already fixed and already, everything is already deterministic. Um, if it's a multiverse... Final Fantasy-esque. Huh? Final Fantasy-esque. I'm not, or Final Destination. Oh, fi- yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I'm not, I, I'm not, yeah, yes, wrong, very much so. Wrong franchise. Um, yeah, and, and then, like, if you have, like, a multiverse scenario, that's got its own headaches because the fragmentation of realities is a pain. Um, and then if you have a, dy- if you have a dynamic timeline, that thing's, like, it's inevitable that you're going to cause a time paradox in dynamic timelines. And so it's just, like... Yeah, I mean, Black Flag's saying, you know, it's not, it, it might not be true time travel, um, which, there, oh, gosh, there's so many different ways that this could be split for me, and, like, that I, again, I'm very curious how the story's going to play it out. Any, we're getting into the final minutes of the episode, so any kind of final thoughts for the introduction? I know we're going to dive into some deeper debate like topics in the advanced episode so for those of you listening to the podcast later this week but any final thoughts that you guys have on this orchid not really okay rindle um there's quite a few uh bits i can recall that uh when um orchid and elmas and i were talking about this that kind of Made things a little bit more interesting from a spin foily perspective. It's kind of odd in a one respect that we have Eris being the one that is controlling Savathun in this particular timeline. That raises a couple of questions that they don't elaborate on. I.e., who is actually controlling who? After all, what is Savathun? If not the aspect of trickery. It's all manipulation. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Uh, yeah, Elvis pointed out Freaky Friday stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of that. And then there's the, the Savathun is green. Shh, Black Flag. Stop telling. You're Although keep give it keep away. Telling. I mean, if you keep telling, you keep giving me power. So I, I mean, stop telling. <laughs> the The thing that I find really interesting about this book is that you have the the overarching story of sisters that have to make the tough decision to combat each other, right? Like Anna doesn't necessarily make the decision to do that, but Elsie does. And right. that is, I don't want to say that they didn't put enough weight into her performance of how she reacts to it, but I do want to say that thankfully we get that kind of realization within the dialogue in game i think the book does a decent job of explaining it but not necessarily a hundred percent of what i would expect for somebody who has to kill their own sibling because for me if i had to kill even if i had to kill the brother i don't like which yes i have a brother i don't like don't we all? i would I mean, still what? feel i mean okay i have three siblings I have a brother I really like, I have a brother I don't really like, and I have a sister who is just can do no wrong because she's the baby. <laughs> well then. I she's and she's been she's also been on my side for years and years and years. So she's got a pass for a lot of things. But the brother that I am not super fond of, I would still have some reservations about killing him even if he became evil. So yeah, because that's still family, regardless. Of... Right, right. I don't know, Blue. What are your final thoughts on this this intro episode? I really like it because it a it opens up different possibilities for the development. To, it opens up like we get to see what some of these characters could develop into. Right, like we see Eris fully leaning into the corruption. We see Zavala, you know, even in the face of complete hopelessness in that abyss of everything he still is kind of he's still standing strong in what he can what his convictions are um we see mara being well mara and all that gloriousness um you know and and so but we also it's a it's a way of seeing that stuff without actually having our our story tempered with it um or tampered with it um I, I will, I'm not going to lie. I'm really curious if we are going to get to see something akin to the bombardment um, because I'll uh, just because that would be really cool to see, um, like actually see, you know, another Red War event, um, because that's what the bombardment basically was, was if the Red War had been successful, that's what would have happened. Um, but instead of Gaul leading the charge, it was Aramis. Um, you know, I, I think the, the reference of it being a dark future that, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of play on the reflections of, you know, the light and the dark, um, which kind of leads to the thing of like, are we in the light future or are, are we in the dark future? Are we in the, you know, the third path that we, you know, way back with Toland? Um, there's so many different paths that this could go down. I am I'm really excited to see how how they merge it into the overarching the overarching themes and stories of Destiny cuz Destiny at the at the basis Destiny has always held the importance of having hope and bringing light into the dark. Um like even even in the darkest aspects of the story that has been the purpose of our story is is you know showing the way to the to that hopefulness. Um, so even in this, and even in this story, even though there is like no hope in this story outside of the story, you know, the person who is telling us this story has found hope again within our guardian. Our guardian has lit the darkness of her despair and given that hope back to her. And she basically, she, I mean, she full out says that. Um, so I'm, I'm really interested to see how they're going to bring that back in you know and bring it into a smooth transition to our story mm -hmm. okay 
Let's do shout outs. Orchid, do you have any shout outs? Thanks for doing all the work for me, guys. Yep. I even did a pun in chat. I know. I know. I was really um, impressed. Mm -hmm. That's your thing most of the time, isn't I it? I know. Well, no, that's Elmas. I don't do puns. I mean, puns are Elmas, terrible. are you proud of me? Mm -hmm. Puns are Orchid's thing. I don't think so, Black Flag. Shout out to Black Flag for thinking puns are my thing. <laughs> Incorrect, but... Rindle, do you have any shout outs? Largely to the... Um... To everyone that is at Bungie for the uh, story development team, all the writers, just for continuing to give us a rich world that we can delve into week after week, and st that still somehow keeps surprising us. Yeah. How many episodes are we up to? 226 with this, but that doesn't include the split episodes of the intro in the advanced session, so we're probably up to like 400 episodes actually released on FFC fairly likely at this point. 446 as of recording. So, yeah, Bungie did a good job of giving us stuff to talk about week after week. Oh, you would yes. You would think we would run out of topics, but not really. Blue, shout outs for you. Uh, I just want to give a huge congratulations to Bife and Elaine for for unlocking mm -hmm. unlocking the achievement of being engaged. Uh, Do you see that ring? Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm oh so excited. Oh my I'm god, so excited it's for so them. pretty. Oh, uh, I'm so happy for them. You know what it reminds me of? And this is going to date me a little bit, mainly because my Princess mother was Diana's a... ring. Uh huh. Uh huh. It looks just like it. Uh huh. What does it remind uh -huh. you of? It's because Prince William gave it, um, yeah, yeah. It's Princess Diana's ring. It's from... Princess Diana's ring, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's but just yeah, like it. Huge, it's beautiful. Huge congratulations to the two of them. I know that's, I'm so, I'm big, so happy big, for them. Big congratulations. Um, but uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm going to echo Green and Rindle too, you know, the the destiny community has been really good but the 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 people who are giving us these this content to build a community around that's not a small feat of what they do and even even when everyone's salty about it it's still it's like hey you're passionate enough to get online and yell about something yeah you got to give them kudos for that like they've done they've done yeah. stuff that you got really pissed about that's because you really like what they like you really like what they have created and you have something, you know, you you have a strong enough opinion about it that it's it's a personal thing to you. And that's, you know, you can be mad. I think it's silly, but you can be mad about a game, but it's still showing that you actually have like a connection there. And that's not a small thing. So You want to wrap up, Blue? Yeah, sorry. I was reading I was reading chat. Sorry. <laughs> We're talking about we're, about we're talking about the sultry tigress now. Yes, instead of the sultry tiger, which was Bife, now we have sultry tigress, and we need to get Elaine on the show well, we do. so we can we do. test this out. We can test this theory out. Oh, here she comes! <laughs> oh man, watch out, boy! She'll chew you up. <laughs> well, as always, I want to thank you for your time, and until next time, remember: with wisdom we conquer. Stand strong, stand tall, and keep exploring. With that, we'll begin to wrap the chat up. Thank you again to those over on Twitch for coming to spend your evening with us. If you'd like to join us for the live streaming of the episodes, please be sure to give us a follow over on twitch.tv slash focusedfirechat. Links to all our episode archives can be found at www.thelorenetwork.com. Please be sure to email us at focusfirechat at gmail.com with any comments and or questions for the team concerning the podcast, and let us know how we're doing by giving us some feedback and a rating over on iTunes as well. So until next time, focus your fire, and may your light shine bright. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.